Welcome. I thought you were going to say, like, to the weakest link, then. No, I was just... I was actually seeing how long the pause would be. <laughs> so yeah. I just said, just... welcome, and then just, you know, to see... If I was paying attention? Yeah, to see if you were paying attention, <laughs> or if you would just, you know, fill in the, the, the whole Cobites podcast bit. But, you know... Uh, no. No. What do you think... What does Anne Robinson do these days? Cashes in on a career of being a bit of a all cunt. That, all that weakest link money. Well, all of the money that she can pile into her face. You know what she did, though, don't you? Bank! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, she's going to be doing Countdown. She's taking over from Nick Hugh on the 28th of June this year. Oh, well, that's that show dead to me. <laughs> Not that I ever... Do you remember <clears> they, had a, <throat> they had a robot that was based on her for Doctor Who? Yeah, it was great. That's the thing, like, Countdown's a nice show. You, if you want to watch the presenter be a cunt, that's what A out of 10 does Countdown's for. Because Jimmy Carr's a professional. Oh, fuck me, there's some dark stuff in her background. Anyway! <laughs> <laughs> I'm well aware that we are not a minute and a half into this intro to the podcast. And I've already called someone a cunt. Oh my god, no, she's a proper bell end. No, she's a proper bell end. Yeah, she's all like, oh, uh, she's a proper victim blamer about the Weinstein thing. He's like, nah, fuck you. Okay, fuck Anne Robinson. Blood Hello, and welcome to this. <laughs> 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 um, what we do? Uh, well, I mean, you know what it is. Uh, vampire time. That's what the that's what the kids say. Um. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm too tired. Uh, yeah, we're talking about vampires and that. Uh, Dracula. BBC Dracula. Not the Dracula we've already done, because we don't do repeats. Yeah, because that would Dave. be dumb. <clears throat> um, and the other one that we did? What was it? True Blood? Something like that? Uh, uh, yeah, there's something to do with yeah. that. Something about vampires. BBC and, Dracula uh, and the other thing that we're talking about. I mean, yeah. It's pretty obvious which one we thought was better, I think. Um... Yeah, weirdly, Anne Robinson doesn't come up outside of this intro. <laughs> no, but strangely, Harvey Weinstein does. <laughs> uh, yeah, copilotspodcast.co.uk. There's not really anything there, but go and have a look anyway. There's a big um, picture of us. There's a big gurning picture of me, like, <laughs> and you're in the back going, ah, ha, 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 which is quite yeah. fun. What What you can't see is the person behind you who said the funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, in that picture we're dancing together, obviously. Are we? Yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, it's cute, isn't it? Um, that's why I cropped out your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you mean your wife? Hey, um, someone's wife. <laughs> Instagram. We are the Real Copilots Podcast. Do you know we have 670 followers over there? I didn't. No, I don't check because I just don't care. <laughs> I don't think many of them are human. Oh, fuck, actually, just looking at some of these, we're, we're followed by quite a few people who I know to be real humans. There's yeah. a lot of people who That's I've met through Pop Bible. That's fucking shut you up, hasn't it? <laughs> There's a, there is a lot of bots, I will be honest as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, unless there is genuinely a user called FNB2898, well, that's, that's, yeah, that could be legit. Um... Zara and photography, that's a bot, if I ever saw one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's nice, though, isn't it? 670 bots following us. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, we're on Twitter as well. I can't remember what it is. I think it's probably it's something real like co-pilots. Co real, real co-pilots. Real co-pilots. There we go. Uh, yeah. That'll do. Fuck you. Goodbye. I, by goodbye he means ah, I mean fuck music. you goodbye <laughs> ah, music uh, don't leave please listen that was a hang on <laughs> rubbish that's really going to confuse you now thanks mate that's alright <laughs> professional Welcome back to the... Oh, uh, wait, we've already done the intro, fuck it. Yeah. I mean... Wait, how... Shit. Yeah. <laughs>
We have done. It was a great intro. Do you not remember recording it? We said all those things. Is it? <laughs> I wonder how obvious it is that we record them afterwards. No, we don't. Oh, yeah. Stop uh, showing behind the curtain. Uh, vampires. Mm. Mm. We have a theme. It's a fucking audio guard. I've just put an ice cube in my mouth. Let's just remember real quick ASMR. Ready? I'm really glad that I not only got to, got to listen to that live, but I also get to listen to it when I'm editing it. <laughs> You're the there's best people, and worst. <laughs> there's people all over the place that are like, oh, yeah, I'm getting the real tingles now. They're loving it. Whereas all that happened to me was I took my headphones off. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, vampires. We've, we, ke- we kept thinking we'd done True Blood. And now we have, or after this, we will have done anyway. Yeah. Um, and what would be a fair thing to put an American vampire <laughs> um, soap against? Well, obviously, it's the BBC version of Dracula. <sighs> obviously, Jesus because those are of the same quality. Quality. <laughs> Definitely. Let's do True Blood first. Let's get it out of the way. So I remember having watched the pilot of True Blood years ago, and I've just remembered why. It's because I found the DVDs of Series 1 in CEX for like two quid, and I thought, fuck it, I'll give this a go. And the only thing I could remember is like, it's about vampires, but like something about a diner as well. <laughs> and that is all I could remember. Yeah, it's like and, Twilight and a pack and Gilmore. Uh, yeah, but not as not as bad as the Twilight half of that would be, and not as good as the Gilmore Girls <laughs> half of that would be. <laughs> I don't know. If the main character is called Suki. Yeah, that that was confusing as well. And yeah, I, right. So yeah, Anna Paquin, who I I think is genuinely she is really good. I really like her. Um, I mean, I've literally seen her in this and X Men, but I I do really like Anna Paquin. Um. So she's working in this diner, and she like straight away, it's like, oh, she can hear people's thoughts, and it's like, has that never occurred to her that that's kind of an odd thing to do? And you know, but it, yeah, anyway, but she doesn't she, seem she to seems, question. She seems to just play it off as if it's like a really obvious thing. <laughs> it's like, well, everyone can do that. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if they can. <laughs> yeah, and it, but she uh, she responds to people's thoughts, and then later on has the the balls to just be like but I'm not telepathic <laughs> and it's yeah like, you've, the, it, you've responded clearly to their thoughts <laughs> <laughs> how, I, how? I, I, like, I like how like yeah if vampires exist oh telepath well that's beyond the realm of believability in our town I don't fucking think so <laughs> yeah <laughs> be so fun so if like the vampires came to town and then she could suddenly start hearing people's thoughts then it would maybe have been interesting uh, <laughs> because like this, that whole sort of like oh magic's come to town which I think makes it quite obvious that the thing I'm rewatching at the moment is Once Upon a Time Once Upon a yeah. Time because that the... is the whole plot of Once Upon a Time <laughs> is this the show that was like we watched a spin off of a spin off of a spin off. Was this like the show that it they were all spin offs of, or was that something else? It, I th- no, I think that's something else. I think that is that Vampire Diaries. I think it's Vampire Diaries. Yeah, because because in that it was still very much a secret that they were vampires, and in this, well, I get the feeling that people know about vampires. Yeah. Um, I, I, in searching for the Vampire Diaries, I did just search for the Vampire Dairies, and now I'm like, oh, that could be fun. <laughs> Vampiric cows. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would have made sense to do this versus the Vampire Diaries, but we already did that, and I can't remember what we did it against. Yeah. But was it the other Dracula? Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, there's a nice bit of symmetry for you. So, um, yeah, so the, she's, there, she's working in this diner in Louisiana, and then this creepy looking vampire dude comes in and 
she's a, kind of a bit like she's like a fangirl almost well, I uh, yeah she's like oh you're our first vampire here and it's like uh, I, I don't know about it. It's, that's something I did think uh, uh, that this did quite well was setting up like um you know the world in in sort of like you've got the news on the telly like oh well, so there's synthetic blood so vampires don't need to yeah. feed on humans but people That's are still cautious. Thing. I and... actually, I'm pretty sure I'd probably quite like this, and I might watch some more of it to see if that's true or not. Because I don't, because th- I didn't like as much as it's going to sound like we hate it when we start talking about uh, the real vampire. <laughs> um, this wasn't shit. No, it wasn't shit. I, I like the I, thing. We've watched much better shows. But we've also watched much worse. Yeah, looking at you, Entourage. Always looking at you, Entourage. <laughs> I never want to think about that show ever again. That's why I only look at it, just from a distance, going, "Why are you a thing?" <laughs> so here's something. That's quite interesting. The pilot episode is called Strange Love, right? <laughs> oh no. Oh, never Not mind. Not Doctor Insight. Um, I just went on the episode list and there's one that's just called Escape from Dragon House. And I thought that was episode two. I was like, Jesus Christ, that's a bit of a jump. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, like, I, I like that, you know, you instantly know what the score is when. The, the two guys at the start they drive past the shop and it's like oh we have true blood like T-R-U blood in yeah. bottled form so you're like oh okay so there are still places where you can get like legit blood yeah. and it, I think it's quite interesting for. to see a world where vampires are just a thing and it's not as well hidden as it is in like most of most the vampire, vampire things stuff, I can think of yeah, oh, oh, that's where no, most sorry. of the conflict comes from in the. Like it's things. the keeping hidden. Yeah, yeah. Like, so true blood is actually it's the ja- it is the synthetic blood that was um, engineered by. It just refers to refers to them as the Japanese. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose it takes t- making up a company name. <laughs> Very true. So these are ba- this is based on books, right? Yeah. I do believe. And it's written by... Is it Charlene Harris? Is this one of... Yeah. Her thingies? Also, I, I, it's not rare, is it, to have a show that's set in the, the southern states. But I struggle to think of shows that we've watched that have been set outside of, like, LA or New York. Those seem to be, like, the... What... Main places like for, and obviously Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> for shows in general or just vampires? I think bits? in general. Uh, we've obviously, done a couple like, of foreign shows, haven't we? Well, I say foreign, like international shows, I guess. Yeah. Well, no, I'm, think, I'm thinking specifically more of American shows rather than. Because, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to make EastEnders but set it in New York. Because <laughs> it just <laughs> wouldn't be the same. Enders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, no, I mean, apart from, I think, well, Gilmore Girls is a pretty... Well, no, Gilmore Girls is set in New York State. Yeah. So, it's like that, that essentially you go east or west, you don't go south. Is, but you'll, like, fly in characters from the south to be like, here are our racists. (laughs) Oh, wow, I'm just looking at her, uh, Charlene Harris's, um... What's called bibliography? She has written a lot of stuff. Oh, is it like Stephen King levels? Like, well, get in that way. There are a lot of novels. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she's written. Uh, I thought they were going to come up with a figure. But no, yeah, she's been. Um, she's written a fucking load. Yeah. So, do you reckon you'd watch more of this if you had time? 
and I don't not like know. a backlog of things to watch. Uh, possibly not. I don't think so. Um, like it didn't grab me. This is the trouble, right? Like, had I started watching this when it came out, I probably would have done because it was that sort of time was when I was really starting to get into like you know vampire and werewolf and so do you think if you started watching if this had come out around the same time that you were watching Buffy you'd probably have watched it yeah quite possibly but it's just that that sort of stuff it just doesn't grab me in the same way that it did anymore unless it's like spectacularly good yeah well speaking of spectacularly good that felt like it should be the segue but okay well let's do that yeah uh, True Blood's fine it's not amazing yeah but... that's the thing I don't I, I can't really think of anything I didn't like about it I can't think of anything that sets it apart from what would have been in 2008 um, the time that all the vampire things came out yeah that's right off the back of Twilight as well it was it was Twilight and it was this and it was Vampire Diaries and I'm sure there was a couple of other little a couple of other bits of like that sort of paranormal romance thing that it was just like the big yeah. boom at the end of the 2000s I, think I might actually see if I might grab an audiobook of this it's a decent idea that's the thing like is I bet the books are better it's, it's always the way isn't it but I bet the books are better um, speaking of books being <laughs> no <laughs> uh, yeah so, so here's there. where it's going to sound like we. Because to be fair, we kind of just tried to find a vampire show to pair with Dracula because we just wanted to talk about Dracula. Uh, yeah. So well, this is well, I th- the last time you came to the flat was when this came out. Yeah. Because we so d- January twenty twenty. Yeah. And this was the same night that you had a curry that was so hot you s- sweated profusely, unlike Prince Andrew, and had to stand on our balcony to cool down. Yeah, in January. <laughs> I was basically like a vampire going in the sun. Yeah. Except instead of turning to ash, I turned to water. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just fucking great. It's Mark Gatiss and Stephen Moffat and this is the thing anything that any of the League of Gentlemen are involved in generally is amazing yeah also I think this does have the advantage over True Blood for the fact that uh, it's three episodes long versus 80 that's which it is, which we all know is a tick in our book yeah we <laughs> fucking love a limited series that's it when I was younger I used to love I say younger. When I was like a couple of years ago, I liked a long thing because it meant that I had a lot of stuff to watch. But yeah, back when I, we had time. Yeah, I've definitely grown into this. Oh, do you know what? Yeah, three, four episodes. That's great. <laughs> then I'm done. Exactly. Um, this is it, it's such a good, smart adaptation of. It's not. I don't think it's not even close. <laughs> really. To um, to the book, and that's the thing. It's really weird with Dracula because no one ever really does it as it is in the in the novel, which is like, I suppose it's good because if you're just lifting it from the book and putting it onto into the film, like, oh, there's well, like, well, there's only be so many times you can do that. Yeah, and we're talking about what a nearly two hundred year old novel. Yeah, so also it needs some updating. Not quite. Oh, just over a hundred years. Because it needs. Well, I mean, to be fair, I haven't read the book. I'm probably not going to either, if I'm honest. Oh uh, yeah, I, I read it a long time ago when I was a kid. I actually, I actually think it might have been the first thing I ever bought online. Was a copy of Dracula from the Waterstones website, and it was two pounds. <laughs> uh, the first thing I bought online was GTA Vice City. Nice. <laughs> oh Christ, that makes you feel old. Yeah, it made me feel old at the time because that was an 18. But it turns out you can just buy them online and no one checks your ID. Because <laughs> at <laughs> like 13 or 14, I just didn't have it. Um, Tell you what did happen GTA Vice City. Amazing. Do I? 
I never. Oh yeah, we had that whole thing with San Andreas. I borrowed it off a mate, and then my brother dobbed me in when we were doing the multiplayer thing. I still haven't forgiven him, really, in a sense. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it was very mean of you to carry it on to not inviting him to the wedding. <laughs> um, Just sending him copies of GTA San Andreas rather than a wedding invitation. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, um, I this is, I, I'm gonna have to watch the whole thing again. It's so fucking good. So it's it why I'm, I'm trying with, to forget a lot more of it. Yeah, before I but watch it. The trouble is, is now I'm remembering a lot of it. So well, it the trouble is, like with, the, the bits that, like the really good bits from the show, are the really memorable bits. Like the point where um, Helsing's explaining why. All of like the like the religious symbols and all of that stuff, like, is harmful to him because it's he's feeding on the life of other people, and so he takes those fears and they're all God fearing. So he becomes fucking shit scared of God and all of his mm. like iconography. And I was like, that is by far the, the most explanation. understandable explanation that anyone has ever tried to give me about why vampires don't like crosses because that's always been the dumbest shit <laughs> <laughs> um, the first one they sort because of, each episode almost it plays as like a almost a different genre of story doesn't it so the first one is the, it's probably like the most traditional like um beginning of like with Harker goes to the castle but it's almost like a it's almost like a, a police interrogation isn't it so there's two nuns who are questioning Jonathan Harker who has escaped from Dracula's castle and they're finding out you know it's what the, happened yeah, while the he nun, was up there. the nuns are asking him about like well what the fuck's going on with that creepy old castle and it's like oh some dude lives there he's old and then young <laughs> Oh, that, it's so good, isn't it? It's just the way like he completely transforms into like oh fuck, it's all just so good. This is the thing I don't want to like say oh, and then you know this person turns out to be this person, and this character is actually this person, and yeah. But to be but, fair, the casting is great in this. As well. Oh yeah. Uh, so Clay's Bang, who he's Dracula. I I've not seen him in anything else before or since. And, he is fucking incredible as Dracula in this, isn't he? Yeah, that's the thing. He must have done other things. You don't just yeah. get Dracula. Uh, he played the role of Sasha Man for the final season of The Affair. We liked that. Was that the one with that was like split into it, two? It told, it told the same story from two different points of view entirely. Yeah, uh, that and was they had, fucking they were different, cool. And we were both like. Well, I like one unreliable narrator. If you give me two, two. I'm going to watch the first episode and nothing else. You're on to a winner. Um, but the, the second episode is like a who done it. It's like a murder mystery because it, it takes place entirely on the Demeter as they're going from Transylvania to England. And then the third one, there's a big old twist in the third one that like caught me off guard for sure. Yeah. Because I don't think you'd, I don't think anyone like could have guessed it was going to do the big change that it does. Um, yeah, and it's really hard to talk about without just being like, "Oh Jesus, I oh, can't believe the, yeah. that Edward Cullen turned up and you know." Just <laughs> <there."> <laughs> that was it. He just he shows up on England shores and he starts sparkling. <laughs> um, but then the, 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 I think my favourite bits in the first episode are. There's a, a reveal of a character who you think is one person and then turns out they're someone else entirely. Um, but then there's the the confrontation between Dracula and Van Helsing in the... Uh, it's a, they're in a church, aren't they? And he's completely yeah. covered in blood and they're just having this big old chat. Oh, man. It's so fucking good. I'm like going to have to rewatch the whole thing. Because I think, like, something like a... 
Blade, maybe to an extent. Like that's when I think of something like big, cool, and vampire. I'm sort of like, oh yeah, you've got like yeah, Blade and well, I can't really think of anything. Else. And most of the Dracula, um, even like uh, oh, what's Dracula Untold? Oh man, I did not go for that at all. That film. I liked some of it, but not all of it. I like the idea, but the answer. that was supposed to be the part of this. Do you remember the whole dark universe they were setting up? So they were setting yeah. up like Frankenstein, the Mummy. They were going to do all the old Universal monsters, create like an MCU of of Universal monster films. And I was like, I am fucking well up for this, but they fucked it. Yeah, well, that's because no one outside of Marvel can. Because you have to not be aiming for that. Uh, or Stephen just... King. <laughs> yeah, but it's easier. I think it's easier to do in books, weirdly. I think it's harder to get actors to sign on for Marvel films. Maybe not so much now, because they've been like, fucking Chris Evans has made a bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, no, because I, when I think of, like, the big vampire films that I enjoyed, it'll be stuff like Underworld as well, and those things, they're all quite, like, action-focused less. And this is quite a, a thinker. And it's weird that I enjoy something that makes me go, I just want to know how it ends. I want to know what happens. Mm. I want to know what these characters say. I wonder what their next interaction's like. Rather than, I wonder when that vampire's going to rip that vampire's head off. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Always disappointed with the lack of werewolves, though. <laughs> that is true. I, I'm like that in everything, though. To be fair, in all well, that's because you know you you need to see yourself represented. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, I think like if you know a little bit about Dracula and and the the novel, there's a few little little bits and pieces, just like little Easter eggs that like or, or things that. It, what's the, there's got to be a term for it so it sort of it subverts your expectations so if you know a little bit of the story and you think okay well I know who this character is and it's, got, it's heading this way there, I think it, a lot it, of it, it is, subverts like, what you think it's going to do you think it's doing one thing and then it would go nah we're doing this because it's new and you're like yeah I'm yeah, fucking it's following like a, you all the way it's like a big wink and a sidestep <laughs> Oh, so good. did we watch the two episodes back to back, and then we went? You had to go home, and then yes. we watched the third one. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I, I can't remember yeah. if we watched. If I was there for a couple of days, and we watched them every night, and then I had to leave. Yeah, I think yeah, we did the first two for sure. Um, but I, I know a lot. Of, there's a quite a few people who watched the third one and were just like, "Oh Jesus!" And they really don't like what it is they do. Like the the big old. I mean, yeah, I can I can see that um, because it's it is quite a thing to do. Yeah. But I think it was more interesting than it would have been for me, anyway. Like, yeah, people have their opinions. And, Definitely, you know, people can like, be wrong. <laughs> I really like it when you know stories do something really bold and like things you're like, Jesus Christ, why the fuck have you done that? Like, yeah, do it because why not? It, it's good to do new and different stuff so why wouldn't you do something like this yeah and also really um, Gas and Moffat are quite the masters of doing stuff like this yeah they there's take a definite they're the... really good at adapting stuff and I like that they're now basically just working through history just going like yeah, fucking Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, we'll adapt some of that. Well, gas is it anyway. And Moffat was said, just like, I'm going to revive Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> Did they say like they're doing something else after this? Like, Are they going to go I and do like Frankenstein really, next or something? Oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? That would be fucking good. Uh, I'm just, gonna have a look I'm honestly at just trying Gates to see what stuff. Gates is working on now. Well, I mean, he basically owns the BBC now. Yeah. Oh, that right. reminds me. Ins Inside Number Nine started last night. Oh shit! New series. Um. 
yeah, I'll have a look at that at some point. But um, yeah, like it's 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 so fucking good. Um, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, honestly, I would just let Mark Gatiss just actually own the BBC and just do whatever he felt like. Yep. As yep. long as he, can you imagine Mark Gatiss writes Extenders? <laughs> it, would, it would be a lot better. There'd be a lot more death. A lot more murders, I reckon. Apparently um, he's in Mission Impossible 7. Is he? Which is filming currently, it's not actually. It's not oh, there. that's fucking cool. Uh, here's something that's really interesting as well. Um, the actor who plays um, Mina Harker in Dracula is an actress called Morvith Clark, and she was in St. Maud, which was like one of I think three films I went to see in the cinema last year and is one of my favourite horror films ever made and she is in the Lord of the Rings TV series and she is playing Galadriel damn yes um, honestly that show in the Lord of the Rings show can't come soon enough yeah I'm, I am really looking forward to that And oh have you seen them? Um, Dominic Monaghan and Billy Boyd are doing a podcast all about Lord of the Rings I did see that. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what <laughs> what that's going to be because if it's just going to be them talking about how they were in Lord of the Rings, I'm not sure how much longer they can cash in on that for. Eh, all the time. Uh, I mean, actually, unless... no. I mean, I will only ever call them Merry and Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> unless Billy Boyd starts talking about how he voiced a doll in Child's Play Six or whatever it is, and Dominic Monaghan's like, "Yeah, I was in Lost, and now I fuck about with animals." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in Lost, and every cunt still called me Mary. <laughs> uh, oh, you yeah. weren't very happy as a junkie, were you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, go and watch Dracula. It's fucking wicked. Yeah, I think even if you're not interested in vampires, it's just good. Yeah, because it's one of those. That if you take all the vampire stuff out of it, I mean, it's weird, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still good. Weirdly, talking about Dracula, you maybe want to watch Hannibal. I don't really understand why, but there is a there is a shorthand there, isn't it? A, a shortcut. There is something between the two of them. Yeah, like, I think it, it might be blood. <laughs> yeah, and like, but I think it's the, the manipulative yeah. manipulation, and that's. But Hannibal Lecter's almost. He's, you could almost say he's nearly as mythical as. Dracula, isn't he? Because yeah, well, that's the thing. So it's different because he's achievable. Like you could be that if you wanted. Maybe yeah. I'm looking at the villains wrong <laughs> and being like, "We have." I want to be that. you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, because oh, well, I mean, Hannibal like, is essential. Like a cannibal is what I would assume that you would originally have based a vampire on you'd have heard that and gone oh if I take that but I make it supernatural it's palatable but as soon as you sort of go oh no this is just a person that eats persons you go oh that's messed up probably shouldn't do that but if you mix it with an NS advert (laughs) you've got some fucking telly (laughs) Because that's the thing, because, I, I mean, I, I haven't tried to eat during, like, Silence of the Lambs or Red Dragon, but I am, it's a bit, I imagine it might be a bit harder to stomach, but those fucking cooking scenes in Hannibal. Oh, they're so good, aren't they? Mind you, if you, <laughs> you could uh, eat along to Red Dragon by just eating a book right at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's just weird. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but Dracula's really good. Dracula like, is really fucking good. We we haven't we can't go too much into the story because it's just so many uh, twists and turns. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it, don't even look anything up about it. Just do it. It's fucking great. Yeah, unless you're in America, in which case, nah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me watch Daniel's Lost X. <laughs> <laughs> What we're doing next? We're going from vampires to aliens. 
Next, yes. we got Star Trek, the original series, and Star Trek, the next generation. I don't know yeah. what the difference is. Uh, the title. Thanks. Fucking hell. It's a good job you're I, It's very helpful. I mean, yeah, really. I don't understand how you've gotten this far. <laughs> <laughs> what, in life? <laughs> yeah, not noticing simple things like... The words in these titles are different. Yeah. I'm a clever boy now. It's about fucking time. Yeah, I think that's probably that, isn't it? 